former Lizzo dancers were weight shamed and pressured while at strip club lawsuit says. Three former dancers have filed a suit against Lizzo, accusing the singer of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. So that's what we're doing today. Um, <laughs> I, why would this not surprise me if it's true? Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this article. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and supporting my channel. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure that you're still subscribed uh, because YouTube doesn't subscribe people every single day. You can find me over on uh, Rumble and on X, is it called now? I don't know. I mean, they just call it Twitter. X is so random. X, uh, X marks the spot. X is a letter. My ex-girlfriend. X is too random. Why would you call it? That's stupid. All right, well, let's take a look at this video and see what it has to say. We have NBC News exclusive. Three former dancers for pop star Lizzo were accusing the singer of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. That's according to a lawsuit filed today, a Tuesday rather, in Los Angeles. Wait, today is Tuesday, isn't it? Today is Tuesday, so that would be today. <laughs> today August 1st. in Los Angeles. It's funny that I have to ask what day it is. Uh, the dancers who accuse Lizzo, who's known for embracing body positivity, of weight shaming and they and pressuring them to touch a nude performer at an overseas strip club and. So yeah, why is this not surprising that uh, Lizzo, being obese as she is, would weight shame her backup dancers who are also obese? I mean, she's got to take it all the way. It's it's so it's so silly to me that that she um, has obese backup dancers. That's not is that necessary really? I mean, it's probably part of her shtick of going, hey, look, I'm going to support obese black women. All of the dancers, as I understand, are not white as well, which. That is illegal. You can't just hire a bunch of people because they are black. You can't just hire a bunch of people because they are overweight. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not that they're not good dancers, but there are overweight white dancers who are also just as good as these these uh, women of color. Uh, there are thin dancers who are just as talented, probably even more talented than these these women here. So NBC News correspondent Stephen Romo is following the story for us. Uh, Stephen, tell us more about this lawsuit and what these former dancers are alleging. Yeah, a lot of shocking stuff here. Some wide ranging accusations in this lawsuit. This was brought by those three former dancers. They're alleging uh, sexual harassment and creation of a hostile workplace. All of it is shocking to read, but there are also those claims that Lizzo body shamed one of the dancers for weight gain. That's shocking, of course, because Lizzo has been such a beacon of body positivity. So I used to be more progressive than I am now. What, what's the saying go? Something like, if if you're 20 and you're not liberal, you're heartless. And if you're 40 and you're not conservative, you're brainless. Something like that. And when I was more progressive, I was much meaner than I am now. Hard to believe, I know, because I am like super mean, right? Hey, you guys watch my videos, you know, I'm just like the worst. Yeah, this... It wouldn't surprise me that these these woke people are, are more mean. That's what I've noticed, too, is that woke people, just like, they don't, if you don't agree with them 100%, then they get really angry. They get really bent out of shape. I've seen a lot of conservatives get really bent out of shape when you don't agree with them, too. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's probably about the same, actually. So anybody, you know, any of these extreme views, just get away from them. Get into the middle. It's like, look, we don't have all the answers, but there are things that we can say are true, like, yeah, the whole you are whatever you think you are that day thing that's going on these days. The T in the alphabet. Yeah, we know that's not true. Those sexual harassment claims allegedly come from an after party in Amsterdam that Lizzo allegedly hosted after a concert. Now, the plaintiffs claim she forced one of those dancers to touch a nude performer. There are also allegations that a dance captain, Shirley Quigley, harassed people with religious discussions, accused of trying to convert them to her Christian beliefs after they said they were not interested. There are also... And there you go with the, the uh, conservative side of this being like, hey, look, you got to agree with me. Being religious is more of a conservative point of view than, than being non-religious. So it happens both ways. Also, some descriptions of an alleged 12-hour rehearsal described as excruciating. It came after Lizzo allegedly accused some of the dancers of drinking before performances. Now, the dancers are all former employees now. Two were let go. One resigned. The suit names Lizzo, her production company, and Quigley, and not all of them are accused of doing all of these various things. For example, there are also racial harassment allegations that appear to be focused only on that production company. Those uh, Body shaming allegations, though, are the ones that are getting the most headlines, of course, because Lizzo is just known for being such a beacon for so many people. Well, I was going to say this is particularly striking. It's like he just said she's a beacon for so many people. If you're looking to a musician as a role model, you're looking in the wrong place. 
do not do not idolize these musicians musicians it can go back a long way in history before you can find a musician who's worthy of your idolization because or i guess your use them as a role model um because they're you know they're typically not good people like they're, they're, they're the party people right brand is so centered around body positivity have we heard from lizzo or her team yeah, I've kept, uh, continued to check. They have not responded to NBC News requests for comments, but I've just checked social media. Lizzo has posted three times on Instagram today. Nothing about this. Of course, this was just filed today, so we do expect to take some time to actually hear back from them. But we, uh, we are definitely waiting to see what she... And All right, so definitely waiting to see what she has to say. Let's get into the article. Before we do, I wanted to say, I think that, that Lizzo is just a pile of garbage. Right. Anybody who is saying like, oh, I'm oppressed, you know, I'm I'm a obese black woman. I have three layers of oppression. Oh, yet you're an international star who has a national pulpit to project your ideas from not only in your music, but also you do interviews where you whinge about your non-existent problems and the whole notion that we don't have oh there's never been any any obese performers ever before it's like oh this is a, a new thing Cass Elliot and there's been others before her and okay what about Bette Midler she, when she was as she got older she kept performing and she was not a thin woman and then you got more more recently Adele right who got body shamed for losing weight even <laughs> it's ridiculous it's like in this whole body positivity movement the whole body positivity movement is all about trying to take power away from people who have power in the form of beauty. Say, I'm beautiful just the way I am. I don't have to be thin to be beautiful. Yes, you do. That's just how it is. I'm sorry. To be attractive, to be physically attractive, you have to be not fat. I, I don't know what to tell you. That's just how it is. There's going to be some outliers who find the chubs attractive, but or at least acceptable. Those are the exception by far. Well, let's get into the article. Los Angeles... Three of Lizzo's former dancers have accused the singer of S. harassment and creating a, a hostile work environment in a lawsuit filed Tuesday. They also allege that she pressured one of them to touch a nude performer at an Amsterdam club and subjected the group to an excruciating audition after leveling false accusations that they were drinking on the job. The dancers accused Lizzo, a performer known for embracing body positivity and celebrating her physique, of calling attention to one dancer's weight gain and later berating then firing that dancer after she recorded a meeting because of a health condition well i let me give you a little bit more evidence that uh lizzo is not all about body positivity here we go this is an image from one of her uh, music videos look at this muscular man here in the video Do you, why isn't he a shirtless chub there's a lot more of them out there than there are men who look like this here's a um another image still from uh, one of her music videos, where this is her ideal man who just rode up on a motorcycle. Look at these arms. Like he's got a great physique and, it, and a chiseled jawline and all of the things that we find attractive in a man. What does Lizzo bring to the table in the realm of looks? Absolutely nothing worth having. Not a damn thing. She might be like, oh, I'm a boss babe and I got lots of money and this and that. And that. Yeah, okay, well, how many times have you been married? 35-year-old Lizzo has been married zero times. So, yeah, you can see how that's working out for you, can't you? This is why she is body positivity because she wants to shift the paradigm to be like, look, beauty at any size, doesn't matter how big and fat I am. I can eat whatever I want to. I can be as out of shape as I want to be. I can be whatever shape I want to be and you're going to find me attractive. That's just how it's going to work, okay? Because I want to get some action in the bedroom. And this is something that people have a lot of control over. I'm not saying that you can look like anti-woke warrior, but you can be a lot thinner than you are right now, if you want to be, Lizzo. The suit filed in Los Angeles Superior Court and provided to NBC News by the plaintiff's law firm also accuses the captain of Lizzo's dance team of proselytizing to other performers and deriding those who had premarital sex while sharing lewd fantasies simulating oral and publicly discussing the virginity of one of the plaintiffs. All right, then. There you go. Not safe for work. <laughs> the suit does not say if Lizzo knew about the allegations linked to the dance captain, but the plaintiffs believed the singer was aware of their complaints about her, according to their lawyer. The suit names Lizzo, whose real name is Melissa Vivian Jefferson, her production company, and Quigley as defendants. In addition to accusations of a hostile work environment and harassment, 
The suit brings claims for religious and race harassment, false imprisonment, interference with prospective economic advantage, and other allegations. Not every claim was brought against each defendant. Okay, well, yeah, we already figured that out by what we've heard so far, is that not both Lizzo and the, the dance captain were guilty of all of the things. One was guilty of some, and the other was guilty of some others. Something like this happened in my hometown uh, after I, I got out of college, I went back for a year, and I joined a gym, a local gym that they had two locations, and one of the owners of the gym, these two girls who were former employees of the gym took out an article in the local newspaper about him and how he was very inappropriate. He was harry assing them, walking around naked and stuff after hours in front of these two girls when only three people, only these two girls and then him were on the premises, and things like that, and so this was defamation, and he had to file a lawsuit against them. So this is serious stuff. If these girls are lying about this, they could get into big trouble. They might they might be, though. They might be like looking at this and going, hey, look, um, I see dollar signs. Liz is a big name in, in pop music these days. She's got the money. She can afford to pay us something. But I hope that they're telling the truth. And it wouldn't surprise me if they were. The stunning nature of how Lizzo and her management team treated their performers seems to go against everything Lizzo stands for publicly, while privately... She weight shames her dancers and demeans them in ways that are not only illegal, but absolutely demoralizing. Yeah, sounds like it. The suit accuses Lizzo of calling attention to the dancers' weight after an appearance at South by Southwest Music Festival. The singer and her choreographer later told the dancer, Ariana Davis, that she seemed less committed to her role. A comment the suit described as a thinly veiled concern about Davis's weight doesn't sound like it to me but i mean i it's completely out of context so i don't know representatives for lizzo did not immediately respond to requests for comment i see efforts to reach lizzo's production company big girl big touring inc were unsuccessful that doesn't really mean anything they could be busy i don't know i mean maybe i don't know what was going on there but lizzo addressed the suit's allegations in a statement thursday morning saying she's hurt and called the claims false unbelievable and outrageous I, you know, I would not be surprised if you are wrong about this, Lizzo, if you are lying about this because you're so out of touch with reality. You think you're oppressed. That's, that's the thing. You think you're oppressed. How are you oppressed? And you might be saying, oh, well, she could be even a bigger star if she wasn't black and if she wasn't a girl and if she wasn't overweight. Yeah, that's possible, but she could be an even lesser star. So, so you know, I mean, there's like, there's musicians, out, there are musicians out there, and we're gonna talk about one later on who are not those things, who are not black, who are not women, and who are not obese, who aren't as big a deal as Lizzo is. So, you know, you can look at it either way. Davis and another former dancer, Crystal Williams, began performing with Lizzo after competing on her Amazon reality show, Watch Out for the Big Girls. The third dancer, Noel Rodriguez, was hired the same year after performing in the video Rumors, the suit says, and she resigned. So there's the Amsterdam Club accusations. I can't read this part. I'm going to skip past that because it's, um, yeah, it's too adult for YouTube. We got the Harry Assment claim. The race Harry Assment claim is linked to what the suit describes as comments charged with race and fatphobic animus that were made by touring company employees. In one instance, the former dancers asked to be compensated for their downtime at a rate of 50% of their weekly pay according to the suit. An accountant allegedly responded to the request by offering 25% and scolding them for being unacceptable and disrespectful. Maybe they were. I don't know. I mean, unacceptable. That might be an unacceptable amount of money that you're asking to be paid. I don't know what they get paid, you know, for not doing your job. Uh, that's that's a pretty big deal. And, and then I don't know about disrespect. I don't know. Maybe they were disrespectful in their request. I don't know. I wasn't there. Only the dance cast comprised of full-figured women of color were ever spoken to in this manner, the suit states. Mm -hmm. And then there was the religious harassment allegations in connection with the dance, Captain Quigley. According to the suit, she preached her Christian beliefs and took every opportunity to proselytize to any and all in her presence, regardless of protestations. Yeah, you're supposed to keep religion out of work. It's not supposed to be supposed to be part of that. After discovering that Davis was a virgin, Quigley discussed the subject in interviews and posted about it on social media, the suit says. And when cast members asked her to stop pressuring Rodriguez, whom Quigley regarded as a non-believer, according to the suit, about her faith, Quigley responded, no job and no one will stop me from talking about the Lord. Okay, well, then you can just not get a job because... 
you know, workplaces are generally supposed to be free of that sort of thing. I don't remember what was, what's going on with this part down here. The dancers were dismissed. I don't want to read through the rest of this and bore you with all of these details. It is kind of fairly a bit down here. You can take a look at the article. I'll leave a link to it down in the comments. But yeah, this is looking pretty bad for Lizzo. And you know, like I said, she's not a person that I like because she wants to whinge about things that are just not true. So like I said, we're going to talk about a musician who, he isn't obese. He isn't black. He isn't um, female. And he never had a name for himself. Not in the United States, anyway. His name is Sixto Rodriguez. And he cut some albums back in the early 70s that did nothing in the United States. Somehow, at least one of those albums made its way to South Africa, and he became the biggest musician ever in the country of South Africa. And um, I don't know now, I, by saying that, I want to add the caveat, I don't know if, that, if there was a schism between black and white because I was back in apartheid, so maybe he was the biggest musician in South Africa amongst whites. I don't know if there's a schism there. Um, you can do your research, figure it out if you want to. But yeah, he never made it in the United States. And um, he, he was Hispanic, he's Mexican. But otherwise, he was male, and he's thin. He's rail thin. And he's a much better musician than Lizzo is, too. He, he didn't have any of these handicaps. But he didn't do anything in the United States with that, with that music. And then there was a um, documentary made about him called Searching for Sugar Man. Uh, check it out. It's an hour and a half long. They give you the full details about uh, him and the whole mu his whole music and his life and everything. But rest in peace, Sixto. Now, I want to play one of his songs for you. YouTube might force me to cut the, con the song short, but this is I Wonder by Sixto Rodriguez as your palate cleanser. I wonder how many times you've been here. 